In this video, I'll explore other fascinating aspects of the internal workings of feeder organs. First, let's delve deeper into the wind system. In the last video, I explained how the wind enters a wind chest before a pipe speaks. But what happens before that? Well, it starts with a massive blower that sends air through some ductwork and into a box underneath a pressure regulator. Wurlitzer's pressure regulators are weighted with springs. The stronger the spring, the more pressure in the system. At the bottom of the regulator, three valves control the airflow. The first valve, called a cone valve, sits slightly below the base of the regulator. The wind blowing into the regulator raises the top lid, which the cone valve is directly connected to. Small leaks within the whole system mean the regulator never fully inflates, keeping the cone valve slightly below the bottom lid, and always allowing in a little bit of airflow. When a pipe speaks, the wind exiting its mouth reduces the system's pressure. Without a regulator, the pipes would drift out of tune. As the pressure decreases, the regulator's lid drops, opening the cone valve and allowing in more wind, keeping the pressure constant. If the pressure drops too low, the top lid lowers onto a small pallet valve, which hinges open. If the small one isn't enough, the larger pallet valve opens, allowing maximum airflow to the rest of the organ. Theater organs are known for their tremulance, but also for their use of percussion. This is a glockenspiel, an instrument related to the xylophone and marimba. The back of the unit houses a wind chest, similar to the ones used by pipes, but with a bellows, or pneumatic, instead of a hole for a pipe. When inflated, the hammer attached to the pneumatic approaches a chime bar, but doesn't quite make it. Thankfully, it rests on a flexible metal ribbon that allows it to carry on its motion and hit the bar momentarily without resting on it and muting the sound. When the pneumatic loses power, a spring returns the hammer to its original position. Some percussions have a reiteration function, where the hammer hits a note repeatedly, simulating a constant tone. When the reiteration tab is pressed, the electrical signal from a key is diverted to a reiteration contact, which consists of two metal wires touching a metal plate on the pneumatic. When the plate bridges the electrical signal across the reiteration contact, the pneumatic is inflated. But when the pneumatic inflates, the plate detaches, unpowering the wind chest and causing the pneumatic to return, creating a very rapid reciprocating cycle. Organs, unlike pianos, don't have touch-sensitive keys, so expression is achieved through swell shutters. These shutters are placed directly between the listener and a pipe chamber. When fully closed, the sound is blocked, making it quiet. But with each sequential stage opened, the sound increases in volume. Each shutter has two ball-bearing fitted dowels. The shutter frame has specially cut wells for the bearings to slide into, and a clamshell piece is screwed on holding them in place. Behind the shutters is a wind chest connected to pneumatics. When these pneumatics inflate, they push a rod into the shutter, opening it. But not every shutter is connected to a pneumatic. Some, later in the sequence, are linked together, opening simultaneously. A spring underneath the pneumatic returns the shutter to the closed position. This powerful spring would cause them to slam, but a small arm at the bottom runs into an unpowered pneumatic held open by a spring. A small hole lets out air, slowly deflating the pneumatic and acting as a brake. Thanks for watching this video. There's always more to learn, so in time I might even release a third one. But for now, goodbye.